Are you ready? Stand by. Hundreds of thousands of Canadians are involved in shooting sports. We travel the country to bring you the events and the people that make this incredible community unlike any other. Welcome to the CCFR's Canada Downrange. So my name is Rob Furlong. I'm the owner of the Rob Furlong's Marksmanship Academy. I joined the Canadian Air Forces in 97. Very fortunate, I got posted to 3 PPCLI out of Edmonton. Very proud of that regiment. Uh, served in there and during 2002 uh, in Afghanistan. Uh, my team and I were successful in some long-range engagements uh, against the combatants over there. He was the former uh, world record holder for longest uh, sniper kill in the military. He has a facility here that is the Rob Furlong Marksmanship Academy. We put on precision rifle courses, offer them to military law enforcement, and we have a civilian component too as well. We put a lot of effort into designing our program, so it's a three-step program. In total, you'll finish up with a 140-hour program and receive certification of your uh, marksman certification. So level one, you'll be here for three days with us. Uh, we do half and half, half classroom, half on the range. It's a foundational course, so the way that we set it up, it doesn't matter if you've shot 20 years, 50 years, or you've never touched a firearm in your life. Uh, we take you from base level and bring you up to your engaging uh, targets at to 1,000 meters. We're here today for uh, the first Western Canada PRS match. Uh, we're gonna have around 100 shooters out here. It's an awesome facility. We've got huge amounts of range there. It's one of the few places we can do this, not on a military base. Ryan McLean, who, that's how this came to be. I, I met Ryan a, a few years ago at the Newford match. He's a, an outstanding guy. He's very knowledgeable in the PRS community. He's a well-respected member of the community. Uh, he has a, a huge hunger to grow the sport in Canada. Ryan's the, the brains behind the the ranges and the stages. Our firing line's probably four to 500 meters wide. Uh, we have targetry out to 1,700 yards, and we have the ability, we could go to 4,000 meters. It's a higher paced type of shooting for long range shooting. Uh, it's not your lay on your belly and shoot at a stagnant target, or this, you know, it's a regular target at whatever distance, at known distances. Uh, when they're coming out here, they're gonna be shooting uh, distances anywhere from uh, 500 yards out to Around a thousand is the average, uh, and they're going to be doing multiple engagements at different distances. It's a challenge. It's a challenge for sure. We have ROs on every single stage. Uh, they are helping uh, with controlling muzzle uh, control, and there's uh, everything is very, very safe. That's our number one priority on a, on a match like this. Any match like this to do with firearms is safety first. People are willing to drive hours and fly hours to get to these matches. Uh, my name is Ken Thiessen from uh, London, Ontario, Canada. I work for Bullseye London. As a competitor, you're always trying to, to do better than you did last time, right? And that's my, my goal every time I hit the range, be better than last time. So obviously, making as many hits as I can, right? The hits count for points. So I'll be uh, making sure I, I make all my hits uh, count this weekend for sure. It looks really, really, really good. So I'm just excited to uh, get going through the match booklet and see what uh, Ryan has in store for us. Scoring uh, on this type of match is very, very simple. Uh, you hit steel, you get a point. You miss steel, you get no points. There are stages where you have like up to five targets to shoot on and you're shooting like one shot per. So if you miss that single target and you have to move on anyways, you get no feedback on where, you, where you're going. So you, <laughs> you might get back to it and you might not. There are so many things going on. Like it's, it's kind of similar to service rifle in a lot of ways because you have a lot of things going on, but service rifle tends to be uh, the same sort of pattern. Overall, this is something different every time, so um, you have to figure out the position, you have to figure out the wind holds, and the wind here changes from minute to minute, second to second, really. Uh, there's tons of, tons of talent here, and uh, with there being you know 100 shooters from across Canada and, uh, and the U.S., there's lots of Canadian talent. Obviously, the big, uh, the big name that pops up is John Pinch coming up from the U.S., so definitely keeping my eye on him. Ryan does a really good job of making every stage different and make you think different on everything. So I don't think there was any just real easy stages. 
the mental game is enormous. So once you get this base level skill, it's trying to keep your head in the game, stay focused, make mental decisions to, you know, pay attention to every detail with wind. And I just try to make really purposeful decisions to watch the wind, watch the target, study it, go re rehearse the course fire in my head like two or three times before I shoot it so I don't make mistakes. Like I said, the mental thing is an ongoing thing I work on all the time. Coyote, wolf, then your deer. And then you're gonna switch to this position. You're gonna be shooting your deer, wolf, coyote. So there's no penalties. Each stage has its the way the targets will be engaged. So sometimes it's a, a hit to move on. Sometimes it's a, a hit or miss you move on. Uh, and also when there's movement involved, it'll be you engage two targets and then you move. You engage two targets and then you move again. We want everybody to come here, uh, experience a, a really challenging but fun match. Walk away and make some friends, make some contacts in the industry and just grow their knowledge. The CCFR's Canada Downrange is brought to you by The Shooting Edge, SFRC, Select Shooting Supplies, The Calgary Shooting Centre, Target Sports Canada, and Canuck and Bagheera. My name is Patrice uh, Picard, I'm Sales Director at uh, KDEX Defence. Uh, we sponsor since many years Rob Furlong, so it, it was just kind of natural, you know, to just come over here and fly from Quebec actually to go over here and give support also to the uh, those uh, community of uh, shooters. A lot of the guys have been having fun shooting the 6.5, it got no kick to it, it's uh, very, very uh, linear in terms of uh, recoil. That's a direct That's feedback it. of the product uh, that I speak directly with the end user, you know, sometimes they're going to give me some hints here and there. I would like to see this happen, you know, and it's not gonna happen if I stay in my office, you know, I'm gonna lose that kind of feedback, which is critical. There's a thin line between going in the right direction and the wrong direction sometimes, so it's important to be in the field to support. Even though you're competing against everybody and, and those 10 or 12 or 15 guys that are in your squad, yeah, they're all your competitors, but uh, you know, you're, you're with, with the guys the whole weekend, so you, you, wanna, you wanna make friends, you wanna help each other out, you want, you want the squad to be successful as a whole, right? So you know, if, if buddy's you know, struggling on wind calls or on hits or something like that, and you can help them out, I mean, yeah, help, help the guys out, it helps everybody, right? And I mean, it, there's nothing better than competing with strong competition, right? So and, you know, if I can beat you straight up while helping you all along, then hey, all the better. Impact. I'm here with my son today at one of 18 two-day national matches that he'll shoot this year. Uh, my name's Colton Cloud, and I'm from Comfort, Texas. I'm 13. This is my first time competing in Canada. He's been involved in hunting, obviously, since, since he was young, and he started to want to shoot further and further out at the ranch, so we started that, and then I started looking stuff up and finding some club matches and different matches locally that he could start going to, and, and it evolved into us traveling year-round now. We do a PRS match like almost every weekend. The father-son relationship's been wonderful. My wife's starting to get jealous. We've been on the road so much lately. She said she's missing him a lot, but the bonding experience has been great. We've become still a father, still have to discipline him, still have to make him do what's right, but we've, we've, it's a great bond that we've established just spending this much time together. The first goal we have for him is to be the first junior to, to get in the top 10 in a PRS match. He's burning it down. That boy can shoot. I'm super excited to see what he does in the next couple of years. It's cool right now because he wants to hang out with Dad. In a couple of years, we'll see if the if the girls have any involvement in pulling him away from Dad and shooting. I'm hoping not, but we'll see how that works out. When I first saw uh, Colden, I thought he was just a spectator. It's a, I thought somebody had brought their son to the event. When I found out that he was going to be shooting a match, uh, I was obviously enthusiasm was pretty high, but uh, I was intrigued as well. How was a 13-year-old gonna manage these stages? I was super impressed. He cleaned pretty much three stages on the first day. To see that, that's the future of the sport. I think he has a big future. I'd say if you're gonna come out and shoot PRS, uh, I would go and RO a match, so be a range officer for a match. Um, that allows you to come out and see what it's all about. It also uh, allows us to run the matches because if we don't have ROs, we don't have matches. It's great to be part of the shooting community and, and be part of the events that are going on. 
Uh, with new shooters, there, there's so much more interest building in the industry with uh, shooting sports and uh, more, more specific with PRS shooting is becoming more and more mainstream and lots of guys want to get into it. Uh, Miles Schreier from Sherwood Park, Alberta. It's a tough one. You know, it's like I thought I had my uh, my positions all down pat. This just totally threw me a curveball. It's a big learning experience. You know, I'm glad to be a part of it. It's different. I don't know really how to explain it, but uh, it's something I've never done before. You know, it's, well, most of my shooting is done prone. So it was a totally new element to me. You know, the camaraderie and stuff like that between the shooters here and stuff and asking advice from the more seasoned guys. Uh, like that's what's gonna help me out. Well, yeah, I hear from a lot of new shooters like, oh, I gotta practice more, I've gotta do this more. I just, there's always an excuse. Don't make an excuse, just, just literally sign up for a match and go shoot, whether it's a local club match or it's a two day PRS match, just, just show up and shoot. You're gonna learn a ton. There's a wealth of knowledge here. The experienced shooters are always happy to help the new shooters because um, it helps everybody in whole. So it's uh, yeah, the, the new guys, for the new guys that wanna come out, just do it. Uh, it was two rounds, five targets, two rounds per starting around. What was that? I think around 600 yards out to 1,200 yards, and started on a little eight-inch circle. So, you know, it's kind of tricky. I got, you know, lucky got a good hit, two two good hits on the eight-inch round, and worked my way out. I got a seven out of ten. We had a guy in our squad get an eight out of ten, just killed it. So, wind was switchy, kind of beat some guys up, and some guys caught it. There was a few targets that were hard to see when you missed, so you you just kind of guessing. There was no way to make a good correction because your bullets just buried into the grass. That I think about a thousand-yard target was tough. That's a lot of fun. So so far so good. We've got a lot of shooting left. A few other ones that we have a lot of movement on is uh, our tire stage. We'll be engaging a, a target at 600 yards from 10 positions. You know, 10 rounds moving, you know, 10 positions in uh, minute 45 is, is a bit of a challenge. So you've got to really uh, uh, have fluid movements, time management, have a game plan attacking stage like that. So that was that was one that sticks out for sure. That's a great thing for for a child to get involved in this sport because there is so many adults and it's the, they're all like-minded adults. So when you bring your child to one of these matches, you know that you're bringing them to hang out with other adults that think like you and your wife do. So it's great to have them around these, you know, it's great influence to have around a young child. And it's, it's good for them to learn to be around guns and learn that it's not, guns aren't for just hunting and they're not for crime. How the bag kept falling over and my bipod i should have put it flat instead of left it how it was i didn't have enough room for my bag to be under the uh, under the rail for new shooters it's a blast to shoot i've had guys come to matches and they have not hit a target all day long and had a blast <laughs> doing it. Every one of these guys out here, I bet you go, go hunting every fall as well. And uh, you know, every one of them also invests in this community and it's a huge part of the economy in Canada here for the firearms industry. We are such a large, diverse number of really like-minded, well-respected people. Firearm rights are very important because it's part of the freedom as being a Canadian, especially being in one of the largest, one of the most rural countries in the world. The rifle is a very essential tool in day-to-day -day life, especially myself because I'm a rancher slash farmer. The more together that we can be, the more consolidated our efforts can be to protect our freedoms and to keep enjoying the sports that we love. If you go back in history, we're rich with the use of firearms for hunting and, and sport. A lot of people are probably not aware of that throughout Canada. Uh, larger city centers, they're not exposed to firearms much like we'll say rural Alberta. Um, we appreciate the rights of all Canadians, no matter what it is, if it's uh, freedom of speech or firearms rights. And I think as Canadians, we have to support one another and responsible gun ownership in Canada has the same rights as everything else. Uh, we, ha we have to be very careful not to let that type of stuff slip away. That stage was a little tough. I mean, uh, definitely you try to go to the stage with a game plan, 
and uh, prepare ahead of time. But until you get to that barricade or that obstacle and actually get on it and start to feel it out, um, it can uh, make you change your game plan real quick. So you always try to make a plan, but have a plan B. So uh, that one, uh, that one was a tough one. Not many guys get to shoot mover movers. This is the only one, obviously, in Canada that I know that has a mover. So a uh, mover is Yellow a moving again. target, steel target at uh, any kind of distance and it can be anywhere from a, a walking pace to a running pace. 375 yards, 12 rounds, so this, this, the issue with this was speed and precision. So there's a stick with a 5 inch flapper in there and you had to, oh, you, you know, hits only counted on the flapper and so it was a speed issue with getting 12 rounds off from three different positions and precision with a 5 inch flapper. Kind of pick up the wind, you could hit the plate but it didn't count unless you hit the little 5 inch in the middle. And it was just a, kind of a, it was a fast stage, not terribly stable, uh, but it was a fun one. It was a, it was a, it was well designed. So the uh, categories break down as uh, military and law enforcement is uh, the mil mills trophy, and then we have uh, the TAC trophy, which is a 223 or 308 under a certain speed limit and certain weight bullet. So that's the those are the two divisions that are separate from the open division as well that we have. Uh, majority of shooters run open division. Some guys like the TAC division for the, the challenge of shooting a, a 308 and some pretty wild wins. Uh, having never done a PRS match myself and watching the caliber of shooters that attended our event here, I was really impressed. For us, seeing that many people uh, at our facility, it's a, an opportunity for us to open our doors and let them showcase their skills. Everybody was, seemed to have a blast and uh, people walked that prize table all the way to the end and they all got amazing prizes, which is great from all our awesome sponsors we have to come up to this match. In so. uh, first place overall, uh, we have uh, John Pension. He's going to win this KDX rifle with a Leopold Mark V on top of it as well. John Pinch there, he finished I believe with a 169 out of uh, just shy of 200 possible points. The guy just burnt it down all weekend. So he's an amazing shooter. Uh, the guy is uh, awesome at calling wind. And sometimes it really comes together and this weekend everything was clicking. You know, I hit some real tough targets that you gotta get a little bit lucky on and I did just with the wind. And so yeah, I shot good and I got a little bit lucky on some so it went really, really well. So. Uh, it was fun. It's fun coming up here. It's fun meeting new faces and uh, Canadians are more friendly than Americans so it's fun hanging out up here. It looks like I finished in 31st uh, which is reasonable for me. I'm still learning this game. Um, I'm pretty happy actually because yesterday after day one I was in 52nd place so I gained a lot of places today which was a good thing. 18th overall on the match which uh, super happy anytime I can get a top 20 finish uh, which that's so far best finish this season so far. I didn't feel like I shot that well. I thought I had a lot more in me to, to, to do more there, but uh, with top 20 finish in any one of these two-day PRS match events is, uh, is solid shooting, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, I felt like today I shot a lot better than I shot yesterday, but overall I think I did pretty good. I got eighth place overall. I'm definitely gonna come back, yeah. It's been a lot of fun and the weather's really nice. Guys, I just wanna say a big thank you to you guys. There's a lot of great shooters in Canada. Having our friends to the south come up and uh, visit, and even people from overseas, it was amazing. Three days of uh, total excitement, making friends, and yeah, I was pretty impressed. Thanks again. The CCFR's Canada Downrange is brought to you by The Shooting Edge. SFRC, Select Shooting Supplies, the Calgary Shooting Center, Target Sports Canada, and Canuck and Bagheera. Hey guys, it's Rod. I've got an interesting uh, pro tips for you today. So I've run a lot of people through the Canadian Firearm Safety Course and every once in a while, it doesn't happen too often to me, but every once in a while, I'll have someone come in for non-restricted only. And most of the time, of course, it's someone that just wants to go hunting. For some reason, it doesn't happen very often in my class. Maybe it happens uh, elsewhere. But typically when people come in, I will always have a chat with them about why they would get a restricted firearms license uh, when all they want to do, at least at the current time, is hunt. So there's really two basic reasons. Number one is it's really not a lot of effort to get that extra license. It's, well, it's one extra day and maybe $100 to $150 more money at the time that you're taking the firearm safety course. And it's easier to take those courses 
uh, consecutively, right? You do the non-restricted on the Saturday and you just stay for that extra day on the Sunday and get it restricted. And what that does is it gives you the opportunity, even if you don't want a, a handgun or an AR-15 right now, maybe you do four years from now or two years from now or 20 years from now. Well, you don't have to go through the whole process again. Go find an instructor, pay again, sit through the class, send all that paperwork, pay the fee again, which is only for one component of the PAL, it's $60. But if you do both licenses, it's $80. So even, I know we're only talking about a few dollars either way, but again, it just makes, makes sense there. And the other reason primarily is if, if there's a change in the law. So let's say the government says, okay, you know what? No more restricted firearms licenses. You already have one. And the more people that have restricted firearms licenses, some right now uh, in Canada, there's around half a million people that have a restricted PAL. At least you'll be one of those people. And the government, a lot of times when it comes to firearms, they're big fans of grandfathering. So they're gonna say, we're not taking anything away from anybody. Everybody that has a restricted PAL gets to keep it, but no more new ones. At least you're there uh, and you got under the wire and you get to hold on to that stuff. And even if you had a restricted firearm, whether it's an AR-15 or a handgun, you'll probably be able to keep those firearms. I mean, things can change obviously, right? They've changed in other countries where they've done buybacks and whatnot. But in the past in Canada, if you had that type of firearm or, or you had that license, you were able to keep it when all the new people in later couldn't. So is it worth it to get a restricted firearms license, even if you're thinking, well, I just want to go hunting? In my opinion, absolutely, because all you're exposed to is a few extra dollars for the processing fee, an extra day of your time, and an extra class fee of somewhere, I guess it depends where you take the course, because the prices are different throughout the country, anywhere from $80 to $150. I'm going to leave it up to you to decide, but at least you now have the information. So that's going to be it for this episode of Pro Tips. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon. Remember, if you don't stand up for your own ability to own and use firearms, who will? Join the CCFR or donate right now at www.firearmrights.ca.